Here is a 2024 Subaru Crosstrack Premium in magnetic gray pearl over black premium cloth interior. This is a refresh, which we needed it because in the interior and the exterior, it now looks more rugged and optioning the wilderness will increase your clearance to 9.3 inches. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and the refresh starts up in the front. Redesigned steering responsive LED headlights, daytime runnings and fog lights. What I like about this is all trims get the steering response. The lower matte gray and keeping 8.7 inches of clearance, which is the best in class. LED fog lamps because we have the premium trim and the grill gets tweaked going into the wilderness. It's going to look more rugged for the whole profile of the vehicle and it will also give you all-terrain tires. 17 inch wheel setup, 18 inch will go onto the top trims. 10% stiffer chassis, keeping four wheel independent suspension. The disc 0.8 inches larger in the front, 0.4 inches larger in the rear, and 20% less vibration because of the whole reconfiguration. The components that's underneath it will add more curb weight to all of the trims. This is the standard 2.0 liter Subaru Boxer engine, four cylinder that's producing 152 horsepower and 145 pound feet of torque. That's paired to a more performance linear tronic CVT transmission because they tweaked it this year, achieving 27 MPGs for the city, 34 MPGs for the highway, standard symmetrical all wheel drive, which is the best in class because no no SUV is going to give you this much performance with independent suspension, upgraded chassis, comparing Toyota, Honda, and Mazda. This one's going to have better clearance. The raised roof rails so you could put tie downs so you don't have to put the crossbars even though it'll look a lot more aggressive with it. Standard C-structure LED tail lights, vehicle dynamic control, X drive with hill descent, and SI mode which is your performance management to make the vehicle go at a higher RPM so you can get in and out of lanes a little bit quicker. We get the mud flat with the cross track badging, a more boxy refreshed lower bumper with the diffuser. And it doesn't matter if you go up to the 2.5 liter because your towing is still going to be 1500 pounds. So only reason why you would option that is if you need a little bit more motivation to get in and out of lanes and getting up onto the interstate. Quick release going into 19.9 cubic feet of storage. You have an area that you can put a bottle on both sides. And underneath the floor, you get a spare tire. The interior lights are not going to be LED on the premium. Split fold the rear bench at a 40-60 split, and that will increase cargo to 54.7 cubic feet. It does have a wide opening, but it's going to be a touch less in cargo than the prior gen. Let's go inside startup so you can hear that exhaust note. Headroom, not gonna be an issue if you're over six foot. Same thing with leg space. It's a deep foot well, and it goes in and wide, even though the, the center cluster expands out into the reconfigured dashboard. You get the same pattern that's found throughout the bottom of the vehicle on the passenger side, and then it comes back onto the driver's side. 11.6 Subaru Starlink. Optional navigation goes only on the premium. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, reverse camera with full trajectory, standard dual climate control settings, which I like this because now you're getting a lot more standard amenities than the prior gen, and you still have physical buttons that you can push on the side. Working into an area that you can put your cell phone, the key fob for the new Subaru Crosstrack, USB ports, heated because of option 14. And I like the redesign here because it's more cleaned up and you can lift these up so you can make the cup holders a little bit deeper, a little bit of storage right here. It's gonna be more sporty, open up inside. And it's a deep storage pocket. The steering wheel is three spoke, multi-function, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist with the paddle shifters. The gauge cluster has a digital reader in the center that can go through an array of information for the driver. Finally fixing the eyesight where you can actually put your hands here to adjust because on the prior gen, if you remember, it was very tight. Six speakers come standard in the premium. 
apartment card in is an option for the limited. The door panel is going to have soft materials and every day where it needs to be for resting. One touch up and down for the front windows and a medium sized storage pocket with a couple of beverage holders carved out. For the back seats, headroom, still not an issue. It's carved out as you're noticing because of the moonroof. Leg space is still pretty good and you get storage behind the passenger seat. Because we're in the premium, you get USB ports. And you get this area here that you can rest your arm with some cup holders. Otherwise, the base will not have it. Door panel, it's gonna have the same materials pretty much in the front, except they take out the soft materials here. It's gonna be the same textures for the lower and an area for one bottle or flask. Scooting into the center, the floor is still not completely flat. You will be sharing feet space. The rails are pushed up, but in shoulder space is actually not too bad for the width of the vehicle. And the same thing with height, as long as you sit back because of the way this design is. One con about the center seat is the seat belt, the way it's structured. It's very difficult to put them in these smaller vehicles, but you could just detach it here so it gives more cargo. 152 horsepower and 145 pound-feet of torque. The Linear Tronic CVT transmission has been tweaked, so it should be better in the performance line. The 2.5 liter, you will have 30 more horsepower and 33 more pound-feet of torque, so the motivation will be a little bit quicker. It's not gonna be something so crazy, but I do like the refresh because they have addressed a lot of things that I feel like they really needed to implement for the cross track to move it to the next level. Look at this thing go. It definitely has some motivation. It will take a little bit more time, but when you're in this price category, it's kind of normal, so can't really complain. The drive is a lot more comfortable than the prior gen, and it's an everyday practical car blended in. Now that's gonna take me to some pros and cons. Starting off with the pros, the refresh, they finally took care of the eyesight. Now I can actually put my hand here and move the rear view mirror because this was so much more chunky in the prior gens. For the dash, I like the refresh. The enlarged screen, it can be glitchy, so that is a con, but for the most part, it works seamless and it's basically like an Android or an Apple whenever you're just touching the app. So it's very user-friendly and you still have knobs, which a lot of the new vehicles are going against that and just putting everything in the infotainment. So you can still control the climate control and your sound and changing the tracks for the audio sound system. The base is going to be stripped out. The premium cloth seats are comfortable. The cloth itself, both of them breathe about the same. Leather will only be found on the touring trim. Power seat adjustments is also good for the driver's side nothing for the passenger side though and we are on the premium trim which it would be nice to have at least a four-way power seat adjustment the wilderness definitely will make this a lot more athletic you get over nine inches of clearance and standard is at 8.7 inches with the standard all-wheel drive system there's a lot more standard amenities in this gen than the prior the exterior I like the boxy look it fits in what we're going for for categories of all the new refresh vehicles Moving in and out of lanes, the steering's gonna have a little bit of weight. It's not going to be as loose as a Jeep, but I do like that it adds that weight to it because you can feel any imperfections in the road. On the cons, towing hasn't increased. They haven't changed anything to put the back seats down. You still have to fold them down from the back door area. You can't really do it in the cargo unless you're tall like me. Turn radius at a stop point, it's going to receive Right at two lanes, let's go. You're still going to hear the engine filter in. You'll still hear some of the road noise because you are picked up. Other cons is you lose a little bit of cargo capacity because they're trying to make it a little bit more roomy for the interior. That could be a plus or a negative depending on how you want to cut the cookie. Visibility is always good because you have the enlarged windows, Subaru EyeSight, which is definitely going to help with safety. And now we're receiving enlarged front and rear brakes. I know it doesn't sound like it's a lot from what I was saying on the exterior, 0.8 to 0.4 inches larger, 
But when you're considering you're at 70 to 75 miles per hour to zero stop, it's going to give you about an increase of 10 feet, which is pretty good considering we have increased weight from the base trim. It's a little bit around 60 pounds more going to the rivals, Toyota, Honda, and Mazda. The Mazda is gonna be a lot more tight. The suspension to this is going to be better in the sense of it's all independent. They got a torsome rear beam. And even in the back seat, you're gonna have a lot more room and a lot more cargo capacity. Going into Toyota, they need to do a little bit of touch-ups in the interior. It's a good vehicle in the sense that you get a lot of amenities, but you're gonna get just as many standard amenities and safety features in this. You're gonna have a better suspension layout, and it's also gonna have better ground clearance. As for Honda, Everything's been refreshed on the Honda side. So the interior is going to be a little bit more soundproof. It's going to sit a little bit lower. It feels a little bit more wide and a lot of that's derived for this center area here. Subaru did a good job cleaning it up, but they have taken out some storage amenities where they could have maybe added a pass through. I know it's a smaller SUV, but just to optimize storage capacity for the front occupants. Overall, I like what I'm seeing. I feel that Subaru has definitely refreshed the vehicle to entertain a lot of the negatives and bring a lot more positives but let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you're new to the channel consider subscribing check out the next video merchandise website and instagram and i like to thank subaru lakeland for giving us this 2024 subaru cross track premium for our car review